Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will look at foot modifiers. Take a look at our cow. Sometimes we almost wonder if there's not eight legs on a cow because of the challenges we have on foot care in high-producing cows in our current housing systems. We'll look at several different feed additives that may be used to improve foot health on dairy cows. But remember, if there is a challenge, be it cow comfort, be it wetness, be it foot rot, hairy heel warts, you really need to address that. Some farmers use these feed additives as a band-aid when in fact there is a real injury, if we want to call it that way, in the herd and we must address that first. With that said, let's move to our first product called biotin. This is the new kid on the block, again one of those B vitamin products that has a unique function on foot health. Biotin has a rich history, especially in the horse industry. So the dairy industry has been a bit later coming on board looking at its role in, in the dairy cow hoof production. Its function primarily is to improve hooves by such areas as reduced heel warts, claw lesions, white line separations, sand cracks, and sole ulcers. Recently, Ohio State has published two different studies also seeing an increase in milk production. Interesting that milk production initially was thought due to better foot health, but the second study found it related more to a metabolic effect. So we may see it as a energy modifier, much like we see in some of the other B vitamins. Again, there is research that looks at all five of these different functions and can be found either in beef or in dairy cattle. The recommended levels is 10 to 20 milligrams per cow per day. Initially, we'd like to start seeing that according to the company being fed for at least six months to one year before you can biologically evaluate it. So you really have to commit to this product long term before either putting it in or pulling it back out of the diet. The cost is 8 to 10 cents per cow per day. However, this price in the year 2001 has been very variable depending on supply, demand, and availability of the product. So be careful on this actual cost. If we get the milk response seen in the two Ohio State studies, the benefit to cost ratio is 4 to 1. Therefore, feeding strategies would be in those herds that tend to have a chronic foot problem and do not seem to respond well or have already have zinc into it, and we have seen no other problems in the herd related to diet or cow comfort and concrete issues. We may require to be supplemented for at least six months before we see a response, and some companies recommend that it begins supplementation at 15 months of age. So we build up the blood levels of biotin to improve health before the animal calves the first time into the herd. The status we have at rank is an experimental status, thinking we need more research and more studies, although now we have seen studies coming out of Canada and some other foreign countries as well. Just keep your eyes and ears open on this one to see how the recommendations and levels might change in the future. The other product we'll look at is zinc methionine. This one has been around quite a bit longer. We found that the zinc and or the methionine or in together can improve immune response in animals, harden hooves, and lower somatic cell count. Both the methionine can have a role in some of these functions as well as the zinc. The recommended levels is about 9 grams per day of one of the commercial products called ZinPro 40 product. This will deliver in the range of about 300 parts per million in the total ration dry matter. The cost of this product is cheaper, somewhere in that 2 to 4 cents per cow range depending on levels you're adding it. The benefit to cost ratio, especially when you look at milk production responses and lower somatic cell counts, can be 14 to 1. So it has a very favorable benefit to cost ratio, especially when we see some improvement in udder health and milk quality, therefore resulting in more milk production. Feeding strategies is to feed to cows experiencing foot disorders. If we like to lower somatic cells, and again, we're not looking at infected mammary glands. We're looking at those mammary glands that may have somatic cell counts around 200 to 300,000, and this just makes that immune system even more aggressive in warding off diseases and lowering somatic cell count and perhaps in herds that have wet environments where the feet stay fairly wet and we challenge these feet. Therefore, we do recommend the product in the feeding program. Let's then look at a quick update on organic minerals. Primarily, this is a summary that was published this last year. We look at organic minerals, and this is looking at a combination of products and reproduction, eight different studies. We saw a significant reduction of seven days to first service. We also saw 16 fewer days open that was statistical at the O5 level. Another group of studies looking at foot health, which is what we're looking at in this module, we saw in 3,000 different cows in different studies, a 34% reduction in white line separation. That was significant at the O01 level. That's very highly significant response. 11% reduction in sole ulcers at the O5 level, 
and a 33% reduction in digital dermatitis at the O1 level. Again, some pretty strong evidence indicating that the organic minerals may have a place in improving foot health. And finally, let's take a quick look on milk production. Notice the studies are a little bit fewer in number here. Eight different studies summarized about a 3.3% increase in milk production, highly significant, and that was a comparison in terms of production. If you want to know what the pounds of milk was, that was 78.6 pounds for controlled cows versus 81.2 pounds, and those cows receiving the organic minerals. We also saw a slight improvement in fat and protein components, although they're very modest. Again, these are percent improvement, not actual units, so be careful on that one. And finally, we looked at utter health with, again, those same eight studies. In these studies, a 12.2% reduction in somatic cell count, and that was significant at the 0.1 level. And that's more of a trend than highly significant. But for our students, the actual somatic cell count reduction was from the controls of 343,000 somatic cells compared to the animals receiving the organic trace minerals to 301,000 somatic cells. 